Welcome to Exploring Yachts. My name's Ed Colley. Here we are in one of the most interesting art areas in, I would say, all of Massachusetts. Almost every other block here, there's a gallery. But if you really want to find one of the truly unique galleries here in Rockport, you've got to come to the Thomas Nicholas Gallery. Let's go in and meet TM Nicholas. Follow me and uh, watch your step. Tom, uh, welcome to Exploring the Arts. Thanks for letting me or inviting me here to the uh, Nicholas studio today. Uh, I'm just curious, uh, have you been interested in art most of your life? Yeah, I, I, I used to watch my father paint as a, as a boy and uh, if, if I was quiet he'd let me come into the studio and watch him paint. And mm -hmm. That lasted for a little while and of course I had to ask a question and that, uh, and it was time to go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've always been interested in it. I've been able to have had a great life traveling with my parents and, you know, painting with my father growing up and, and then taking uh, workshops and things that he was involved in. And, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's all I've ever wanted to do, mm -hmm. really. So uh, would you be considered mainly a, uh, a landscape painter or... Yeah, I do other things, occasional other things, um, seascapes and still lifes and, you know, a little bit with the figure, not much. Uh, so what is it about the landscape or the seascape that catches your interest? Well, initially, um, when I was starting, I, I, I always enjoyed that feeling of being outside and, you know, painting a picture that, you know, you, you're... you're a, hiking or you're alone and you just stumble onto this scene and it's it's breathtaking you know and you you try to reproduce that in paint that was the the idea early on and then as time goes on you know you you try to get a little more of your own feelings in there you bend things a little you twist things a little and add something to the scene besides your your father who were some of your inspirations or artists that you were well gross in yeah, growing up in this area, we have, you know, a great tradition from the Cape Ann School. And I like, I like Aldro Hibbert a lot because I, lo I love to paint in the wintertime and the snow, you know. Years ago, the artists used to paint women in white dresses and, you know, these impressionistic things. And it was, it was really for the white because the white is influenced by all these other colors. And, and now, you know, we don't see that stuff around as much so we go out to paint in the in the winter time and use the snow for that mm -hmm. yeah. and i'm not alone with that there's an awful lot of us in the northeast that love to paint in the winter time where did you go to art school i came out of high school well in high school i took uh, classes every other day on a work study program from john tarillac mm -hmm. and uh, he had the gloucester academy at that time and uh, after that, I went to Montserrat for a year. And then after that and during that time, I took workshops from some of the California painters uh, that were around at that time, uh, Millet Sheets and Jade Fawn and uh, Gibson. There was, there was a bunch of them uh, in a workshop program that my father was invited to by Jade Fawn and Jade Fawn Watercolor Workshops. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular locations in Rockport that you prefer over others in terms of material? Or, or places um, you like to paint more than others? Well, I kind of, I, I've, I've been painting in this area for... Is there anything here you haven't painted yet? 32 <laughs> plus years. I think I've been, I think I've painted in every really great spot, at least a few if not more times, but... Um, I keep finding little corners now, you know, little areas where I haven't, I haven't painted before. I see it's not a grand view a lot, of, a lot of times. It's a small thing or it's a piece of something, you know, that catches my eye. So you could go to the same area several times and see it differently every time. Yeah, and you, you know, weather conditions play a part. Sometimes the day is more dramatic, sometimes... You kind of mentioned, we talked before a little bit, you mentioned that... Uh, when you go out, you might sketch an area, maybe when it's in the winter or time or something like that. Mm -hmm. You also use a camera when you work? I take a lot of pictures um, while I'm painting, but 
I, I make changes on location and I find oftentimes that the photo doesn't help me much. What I like to do now is, is uh, I'll spend four to six hours on location um, and at that point I pretty much got the picture locked in. I try to just ask myself what the picture needs in the studio from that point instead of using photography. So let's say, for example, you're going to do a, a seascape and you're, in, you're on location. Uh, talk me through how you set up your easel, how you put your palette out there, uh, how you, what techniques do you use to start the painting? How do you start it? Uh, well, seascape is extremely difficult on location. I had a run uh, just after January where the surf was kicked up and we had some warm days. I think it was in February or March. I put out my palette I, the same way. It is there's no real rhyme or reason. It's just the, just that I've been doing that way since I started painting at, at about 18, 17, 18. So I know where every color is without even having to look at it. I have a one of these Anderson easels, which is a big tripod. I put my paint box in the middle, and they're very good in the wind. I clip coffee cans, one for brushes, and one for paint thinner. Mm -hmm. But to start a seascape painting outdoors, I try to look for just the big patterns, um, light and dark, and uh, you know, the simple, very simple patterns in the water to begin with. And then things get more complex as, as time goes on. You play, it's either about the water or the rocks. Okay, let's say it's not going well. Mm -hmm. What do you do? I scrape it off and I go, go at it again. You're gonna you're gonna do that painting no matter what, right? Well, you're determined to some, get something out of that. Sometimes I really feel like an area is cursed. Are you ever intimidated? I'm gonna say, are you ever intimidated by all the time? Yeah. It's scary to go out there with a blank canvas. I don't feel comfortable until I've got something on there, and then I feel like I I can handle it. I oftentimes start I I, I start off tentative. Mm -hmm. Um, occasionally it works, but a lot of times it doesn't, and I have to, I have to break through that first. But you don't just work through it, right? You just don't like, for example, you said you just scrape it off and start again. I scrape it but off. You don't like, damn it, I'm going to go and work on this thing, paint over this, paint over that. You don't do that. No, no, I, I, I scrape it off and I start again, and a lot of times I just pick up my easel and I'll walk ten feet or something, I'll put it down and, and try a different area, and I've done that eight or ten times sometimes in a day to, before. But I always leave with something. Let's say you've got two or three paintings going at the same time. Do you go back and forth between paintings? Or do you just start out one and finish, complete that? Or do you switch well, from one to another? Or? I, uh, if, when you go on a trip, I, I, I come back sometimes with six or eight starts from outdoors. And so occasionally I'll work back and forth. One is giving me trouble and I need time to think about it, so I'll pick up something else. But I try and get through everything. Yeah. I so it's not an automatic. Me to it's do not, that. You're not on automatic, then, are you? No. No. You know, some days you everything's clicking. You know what you're doing. Other days you don't. You don't have a clue. And the only way to get jump started is to just start working in a small way. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, do you do watercolors as well? Well, I I started to paint in watercolor, but my father made his reputation in watercolor, and so I I haven't really. Um, focused on it at all and I, I enjoy the oils more mm. frankly I like the richness and I like the sculptural quality you can get with the paint I noticed uh, your paintings have uh, a nice textual feel to them as well as visual almost sculptured in some cases well yeah I think the way you've laid the paint on you know? yeah it's, it's some some effects you can't get you know without building up the paint. You, you know, you, when, when the paint's wet, you squish one color into another and you get a vibration. Other times you're working wet paint over dry paint to get a textural uh, thing. And so there's all of these things to play with, you know. And uh, Is there a particular size you like? Do you prefer one size over another to work on? Or I, that doesn't matter? Well, I like the 24 by 30 size. Because in a day, you know, four, four to six hours, it's a good size. I can make a lot of headway on it. <clears throat> the smaller ones take just as much time, uh, but you, you have more room to move in, in that size. Mm -hmm. When I get bigger than that, 
I like to do it, but I, I get a, you know, it's like running the marathon, you know, you have to, you have to be in shape for it. Did you ever get impatient with the, uh, with the oil paints in terms of uh, the drying times? I use a, um, an underpainting white that I mix with my finish white. Mm -hmm. And in the now, what does it do? It speeds up the drying process a little bit. The next day, the paint will be tacky, which is a fabulous thing to, to work on. Why afterwards. is that? It's, you just have more, more technical options that way. You know, it's kind of like, uh, to make an analogy, when you learn to, to, to ski and you're snow plowing down the mountain, if you go too slow, you can't really turn well. You know, you have to have some snow. To, in the same way with, in a painting, you got to have some paint on there before you can actually take advantage of certain effects. You mentioned you travel quite a bit, right? Yeah, I, what I like to do is I go off someplace for four or five days and I make a bunch of starts and then I come back, I finish the stuff up and it takes me two weeks to three weeks and then I go off again. I, I've taught in Italy and I painted in Italy. I love Italy. Um, painted in England, France, Provence. Um, and I love Europe. I love, I love to paint in Europe. But... Uh, I don't know, you know, years ago you used to, you, we used to go all over the place and we'd put the paintings in here and it didn't seem to matter. Now you get in galleries and things and they all want local things, you know. Are you afraid of uh, commercialism then? No, I mean, I, I, because I like to travel, I don't mind going to these spots and I always find something, you know. But so some, you, don't, you don't paint for a clientele, you paint for yourself, don't you? Yeah, I paint, I paint what I want to paint, and then when it's done, I put it in the galleries. Mm -hmm. um, but I like diversity. I like to do a lot of different things, you know. I like, I like to challenge myself all the time. You know? um, do you ever do any experimenting with your stuff? Do you ever do any collages or things like that? I don't, I don't do what, what you would call, you know, experimenting in the modern sense of the word. I'm always trying to re experiment my own approach. Um, I try, you know, starting things in a different way. I think negatively with spacing. I think mm -hmm. positively. I, you know, I, I screw up my, my colors a lot of times, or I use a limited palette. I'm constantly trying to analyze the best way to portray what I'm looking at. Can you criticize and critique your own work? Can you know when it's not up to your level or that doesn't happen? Well, I'm, I'm mostly unsatisfied with my work. I think that's, that's interesting. Yeah, I think most artists are. Yeah, I think they, they You are. live with it for a little bit and then you don't want to see it or you, don't, you just want to put it aside a little bit. I think the problem is, is that you get your, your taste gets refined and over the years if you spend a long time looking, going to museums and things, after a while, you can tell what the great stuff is. Yeah. Are you inspired by other artists when you go to these galleries and see their work? Yeah, I see paintings now from all over the world and things that I've, n I've never seen before, and it's, it's exciting. And you know, I like to think that I learned something from seeing and analyzing that stuff, but uh, the real way you learn in, in the art business is, is to just do it all the time. I mean, that's do you paint the, every day? Yeah. Even the weekends and Sundays? Yeah. You don't I worked about 7.30, 8 o'clock to 4, 5 o'clock. I can remember Terelac telling me, you know, when I was a teenager over there, he says, you know, we're gonna, you're going to cover miles and miles of canvas. And I thought to myself, oh, God, this sounds exhausting, you know. And I thought if I re listen really well and I pay attention, maybe I'll be able to cut some of that time off. But what he didn't tell me is that it becomes more and more enjoyable, you know, as time goes on. It gets harder, but it's, it's very satisfying. And, you know, it's, you, you want to do it all the time. Do you, living here in Rockwood, do you check out the other galleries at all and see what's going on? And... I don't often go into the other galleries. I try to see the shows at the associations. Um, you know, I, I know you're represented in other museums and galleries, are you not? Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. you tell me what some of them are? Um, yeah, I, I show uh, on Nantucket with Quidley Gallery. I show up in Bar Harbor with um, Argosy Gallery, the Banks Gallery in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and the Guild of Boston Artists, and uh, down in Lambertville, New Jersey. So I used to be more 
spread out, you know, in California and Ohio and but some of these dealers were older and they retired and I haven't really sought representation out, mm -hmm. out west again. You have a family too? I mean, yeah, children? I have four daughters. Are they interested in art at all, any of them? They, they're interested. They have a, uh, I've instilled in them an understanding of it or appreciation of it, but, um, you know, it's a different time now. It isn't, uh, my youngest still, still draws a fair amount, and my second daughter does some drawing. She's a designer, um, but they all used to draw a lot. But you know, then the cell phones came along and all that stuff, and you know, they just don't do it much anymore. So we'll see. You know, maybe uh, maybe later in life, after their careers are going on or whatever, they'll they'll have time to come back to it. Or it would be nice if you know we could carry on the family name. <laughs> Well, listen, I just want to thank you for this interview. I've enjoyed it. And well, thank you. I, and your work is really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, man. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's a wrap from Nicholas Gallery here in Rockport. And I'll see you again in the near future.